going, this is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com and today I have an interview. This is gonna be really, really valuable for every single one of you watching this. I'm bringing on Miss Brandy Morgan. I actually found her from Instagram and I thought her profile was awesome, but it turns out she's an incredible freelancer, software developer, and a designer and she's figured it out herself so today I want to be bringing her on on this platform I'm gonna be asking her a lot of questions and then you guys in the chat can be asking questions too and dropping them and we'll just straight up try to bring you guys as much value as possible what's going on miss Brandy Morgan hi hi yes. Can you hear me? yes I can hear you so nice to have you on here uh, we're actually shooting this too, so this is going to be on YouTube, which is going to be super awesome. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so this is awesome. Um, I introed you a little bit, and I just I told everybody that you're a developer, you're also a designer, and you've been doing freelancing, but just jump in, feel free to drop in like about yourself so everybody could get context around what it is that you do and who you are and everything like that. Yeah, for sure. So I actually started off in marketing, doing inbound marketing at a software development agency, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what got me into programming, yeah. into JavaScript. So I started teaching myself. Um, hey, Zod. <laughs> Just seeing people pop in here. Yeah, this is um, awesome. And so I started learning JavaScript. I decided that I needed to be like immersed into it. Yep. And so I decided to move to Florida. I was living in Minneapolis and I went to Full Sail University and got a degree in web development and design mm -hmm. and started working as mostly, you know, JavaScript developer. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Uh, yeah, my friend who uh, Zinni lives, he's one of my best friends and he has a YouTube channel, What's Dev, and he does JavaScript. That's primarily what he's doing. So you started. So you started from email marketing. You were doing digital marketing. What caused the shift into becoming a developer for you? Why did you want to? Why? Why did you want to learn programming? That's a great question. Um, I was at a company, and the right about the week I started there, they threw me into running this event that they were just randomly decided to start. Yeah. And so I started running this conference and helping it get off the ground, and I had to oversee an overseas team because um, we were a software development company that had blended offshore and onshore development mm -hmm. um, so we could offer those services to companies yep. and so the team that was building our application was over in Bulgaria and I had no context of programming. I, did, I, I didn't know anything about it and so yeah. I had to start teaching myself so I could better communicate with the team. And so when I started to do that, I kind of just realized, oh, this would actually be a really useful skill to have in right. general. Yeah. And so that's kind of what really jumped me into um, teaching myself. And when I decided to make the leap to do it full time, right. was really to just better have context of what it was. They say passions aren't born out of love. They're born out of hate. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, <laughs> so, right? So it's almost like you had so much pain around it. You're like, fuck it. I'm just going to learn myself. So yep. I love that. Now, what happened? Talk to me about once you got into coding, what happened after that? Did you uh, eventually leave your job to start freelancing? Did you find a role at that job as a developer? What happened? How was that transition? I'm very curious. Yeah, so I left and I was doing like Code Academy and I decided to go to Full Sail. So Full Sail is a college software development company. Okay. They're based in Wait, wait, hold on, one, one second. So you left your job and then you jumped into the college? Wait, so talk to me about that. Like what, did you just already have money sitting in the back or was there somebody supporting you? What made it so easy for you to just jump out like that? Loans. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, I had money in the bank, I yep. did. So I was able to pack up and move. So I ended up moving about 1,500 miles away from where I was. And uh, This is beautiful, I love that, okay. It's just kind of like I just knew I needed to do it. There's definitely different types of people in the world. Some people, like my husband is a self-taught developer, and it's amazing. He's a great developer. I'm one of those people that I need to be immersed in it, and I need to be able to ask questions. Yeah. Um, like physically be there. Right. That's just my learning style. And so I basically applied. 
time to go to school. I ended up selling a bunch of stuff, packed it in my car, um, drove to Florida by myself, found some roommates on Craigslist, and started school a few weeks later. Um, yeah. And it all worked out. And while I was in school, um, I ended up getting an internship, and that is what actually really helped me um, with my career in programming because I was able to have real world experience while going to school. Okay, got it. The school that I was going to um, was, it, it, it's more like, it's, it's not computer science, so there's right. no theory, really. Yeah. They, they teach you actual like, programming languages and frameworks they are going to use in the real world. Got it. Now, this school specialized in coding uh, specifically, or was it giving you like general classes as well? No, so Full Sail, so Full Sail University is a school, um, they don't offer traditional degrees. Their main actual degrees is like music, huh. music production. Wow. So a lot of the people that go there go to it for music production because they want to, you know, produce music, yep. and they have like a... Uh, video production program, yep. you know, all sorts of stuff. It's mostly in the tech space, yep. um, but programming is a newer degree that they just started offering, like, I think a few years ago. Got it. Okay. So now you go to this pro, uh, you go to the school, you pick up coding skills. Now, how did you take those and did you turn that into freelancing jobs for yourself or getting full-time jobs as a developer? How did that turn out? Yeah, so we, um, I free, so I, my first like freelance job was for one of my teachers. He, he needed a website for his business. Beautiful. So I did that actually while I was in school. Yep. And then um, they brought in, they had like a panel of people come in and talk. And I really gravitated towards the one because she was a female engineer. Yep. And uh, kind of made friends with her, just asked, hey, if your guys are ever hiring, let me know. And she ended up bringing me in for an interview. And they hired me as an intern. Yeah. And that was when I was still in school. And so I ended up working there. I interned there for over a year, for like a year while I was in school. And then when I graduated, I started working there. Okay. Got it. And that, that's, um, that's a full-time job or was that a freelancing? That was a full-time job. Okay. Yes. Got it. And you're, and then what were you doing with them as a developer? Yep. So we did a lot of, you know, custom WordPress, so PHP, um, you know, JavaScript, CSS. Um, the biggest project I was on was like a full, was almost like a full build, and that was Node.js and Vue. Vue.js, and that was like yep. three years ago now. Oh my gosh, like two, two years ago, three years ago. <laughs> yep, and when you were working on these projects with them, also talk to me about, because a lot of developers say they feel this imposter syndrome, they feel that they're never good enough most of the time. Oh my gosh, yeah. So did you feel like, oh, I'm about to work on this Vue.js project or I'm about to work for them, I don't think I'm good enough. Did you experience that? 100%, yeah. I, think, I think people still experience that. I mean, it depends on where you're at, but I was among these really great developers that had been programming for years and years, it seemed like, and just knew everything. And so I was coming in fresh-faced, um, not knowing anything. I had never used Vue.js when I was thrown into the project. Mm -hmm. It's basically you figure it out as you go, and you kind of realize that that is a lot of what programming is. Yep. Um, you can have these great, a great foundation fundamentals, but when you get into the job, when even freelance, you're thrown into stuff, and you have to figure it out as you go. Yep. 100%. And from there, were you getting other freelancing job opportunities? And did you start doing other freelancing work? Or have you been working with them, you know, uh, until now? No, so I, I quit working there oh, like a while ago. I was frozen a Right. From there, I went there. I quit, I quit there and I went to a startup so I could specialize because my passion was in React Native and React development. And yep. so I went to a startup um, that my husband, at the time it was my boyfriend, he was working at. Okay. And so they hired me as their full-time React Native developer. Got it. And so I was there and I built out their their like first you know V1 of their app for about nine months until it was finished and then, and then I left. Okay. And sort of did my own thing, yeah. 
That's incredible. I love that. That's a very, I mean, to me, a few of the things that I've really gotten out here that I think would be really valuable to people is like, I love the fact that you were just up and ready to drop a job. Like you had a job as a marketer and you, you were like, I think I like this development thing. So I'm going to go do no digital marketer or marketer in their right mind would just up and leave, especially when somebody's comfortable and they have a job, they don't want to do that. So I love that you just took a risk like that and then went into a school and then took loans. So that I actually really admire. Um, and there, I think a lot of people have to be self-aware. And then from there, you were... I 100% agree with you on that. And from there, the other big thing that I got out of it is like the power of relationships. Like the next full-time job that you got uh, or the next freelancing thing that you got was from a teacher. Then the next full-time job you got was from relationships. And then the next freelancing job at the startup that you were talking about, you got also because your husband knew somebody and that led you in the door. Now, they wouldn't keep you there for nine months and help you build a version one if you sucked, right? Yeah. They wouldn't keep you there, but like yeah. that really helps. And I feel that a lot of developers and people just miss that, you know? Um, I think, so, so I'm curious, what are your thoughts on developers in general and their soft skills? Like, cause I think it's one of the weak skills that most developers have. They're mostly introverted and they undervalue that. So in your opinion, how do you value the soft skills? What's your opinion on just the whole thing around soft skills? I think soft skills matter more. Um, and the reason why is because if, so one of the biggest soft skills that if you don't have, you're not going to be successful, that's communication, which gets overlooked. You have, you know, verbal, right, you have verbal, written, and body language. Yeah. Those can all communicate different things to different people. And, you, and like you said, you have to be self-aware. Yep. And if you're able to communicate and you show that you're a team member, you ask questions, I've seen, because I wasn't like the best developer and like a lot of people took a chance at me because I would ask like not even the right questions but willing to ask questions and willing to you know work a little bit harder yep. and a little bit later and uh, you know work under people and be like oh you know like, what am I supposed to do here can you please like show me the best way of doing something instead yep. of being like oh I know everything because I didn't at all 100% you know? I still yeah don't. yep <laughs> that and so I think you know communication is Yep, I totally agree. I think that is, you're right, that is one of these skills that needs to be at the forefront of everybody's mind.